Ooh. Are you trying to be a ghost? You look like bloody Mother Hubbard. <laughs> well, you like you got a net on your head. Just well, the, the stinky ass <laughs> net stings. It's itchy and it stinks Shh, like shit. Don't ruin the moment. Then. Oh, cut that right out. <laughs> why, why are you going back to the earth? <laughs> <laughs> why? Your hood's not pulled over your head. You look like you're wearing a, a, a wig, a dyed wig. <laughs> Happy Halloween! Oh. Spooky season! <laughs> spooky, spooky season! <laughs> that was me dying. <laughs> <laughs> so nice and bizarre game. Hello, everyone. Um, by the way, so happy Halloween. We have. By the way, everyone, I've got a lace over my face, and it's got little splinters of like wispy hair, and they're all just stabbing me in the eye. Yeah, and and just so you know, you can obviously go and check us out on the YouTube or on our clips on social media. Uh, Sophie has decided to to colour in my eyebrows and my eyes with mascara. I've never seen you look prettier. Do I look pretty? You look so pretty. Screw the bleach. We're going dark. Do, I'm not going to go dark. But you have tinted those lashes for so you know exactly what it's all about when you put mascara on. She's telling all of my secrets. It's yeah. honestly frightening. It's a world of truth. I, Sophie and I always play this game, by the way, which is it's actually the most hilarious game in the world. When when we hear each other coming into the house, we hear some of them you or me coming up the stairs. And what we do is we play this game, we we, we play dead. <laughs> no, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, so we do. I will quickly <laughs> run to the sofa and droop myself over it. No, the best is Jamie sometimes like will go be in the bath. Yeah, because he loves bath so bad. And I'll come up the stairs to the bath. I'll be like, Jamie, Jamie. And he'll be sat up in the bath, but just with a hanging head in the bath, like with it running and his like bull sack and penis just out. And I'm like, no. I could be dead. I could be dead. My my go-to is like lying flat, flat on my face on the wooden floor with my arms out just behind the bed. And so he comes around the door and all he sees is my fingers like this. And he doesn't know what's happened to me. Sometimes you do get scared. Uh, when was it the other day you got scared and you were like, Sophie, Sophie? Well, you, when you when you weren't making a noise, you were in bed. Oh, yeah, we were in bed and I was like... You just weren't making a noise. It was really scary. Honestly, it would scare me so much if you died. Okay, well... I no, not hope. if you died, but if you if you, like, if you like weren't here, it would be really, really... You up. look freaky and it's freaking me out. Those little lips look upside down. Never never noticed your lips before until now. What, they look good or they look bad? Crispy little critters. All right, little critters. Okay, <laughs> listen, honey. By the way, do you scare easy? <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, what is this? <laughs> uh, it's a ghost. But do you scare easy? Not really, no. You don't scare uh, easy. I scare easy if people like say hi to me on the street. I jump out of my skin. But in terms of like ghosts, <laughs> I'm not that frightened of ghosts. I'm not scared of spiders. Day, the other day we were driving in the car. We were driving. I can't thinking. take you seriously with that stupid hat on. <laughs> it's like you a look. Hood. You it's look, a hood. Should I tell you what you look like? You're at school and you've got the shit role of playing the dog, <laughs> and you've got the dog ears on, but they've just gone flaccid. Honestly, you uh, you look like we've been fishing and we just thrown a net on you. <laughs> That's what it looks like. Sophie um, did this thing the day. We're sitting in the car, and this happens quite a lot. I think I've taught, I said this before, but you did it the other day again. We're sitting in a taxi, and we're driving down the road, and Sophie's talking to me. <laughs> she was talking to me, and I saw some guy who was holding a sign, and he was asking for money from people in the cars, going up the cars in the, tra in the traffic jam. And I saw this guy. Sophie's window was open behind her, and I saw the guy <laughs> coming towards the window. And in my head, I went yippee, because I knew what was about to happen. The guy put his hands on the window and you turned around and screamed. No, face. it's not funny because it makes me look like an absolute <laughs> arsehole. I don't scream because of any... Like, I, would, I would have given him the clothes of my back. But yeah, I know. I'm not drove. saying that. Yeah, but you're laughing at someone else's misfortune. No, I'm not. I'm laughing at you the You are. That's I'm a not. cruel, cruel thing to do and karma will get you, my I'm friend. I'm laughing. I'm not laughing at his misfortune. I'm laughing at the fact that you screamed at some person's well, I was, face. I screamed. Your sister, your lovely sister, Tash, was putting a letter in my post box <laughs> yesterday on my birthday. I walked out the door. I honestly screamed in her face. I was like, ah! your sister, she must think I'm crazy. <laughs> 
I was All like, whoopsie, right. whoopsie, cotton tails and toes. Okay, cotton tails and toes. Should we, um, should we begin this Halloween episode of Newlyweds? Yeah, let's go for it. Do okay. you think this is going to be sustainable, this whole episode? What? No, you don't need to keep doing that. <laughs> yeah. All out bit. And also remember, it's, po- it's audio, so people are just listening. Okay, well, that's why I'm making noises. Okay, keep going. So rustle, rustle with the, the, with the net over my head. Ooh. Ooh. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to Newly Weds Podcast. Newly Scare <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> Spooky. <laughs> what the fuck? Welcome to Newly Scare. It's a different name. <laughs> <laughs> okay, welcome to Newly Weds Scare. Okay, uh, I'm Jamie Lang. And I'm Sophie Habu. It's Sophie Lang. Habu. <laughs> Lang. Her name is Sophie Lang, legally. No, it isn't. <laughs> it is. You've not changed my name, so I don't know where you're getting this off from. I know, but once you marry me, you That's just... That's not the case. You have to legally change it. I'll yeah, have but, you know. Yeah, but honey, in the registry office, we've been over this before. Honestly, you decided to take the name Lang. So then I'm living in a fraudulent life because I'm living <laughs> as two people. I have no identity right now. I'm Sophie Abu in my world, and I'm Sophie Lang in the registry as well. <laughs> So laughing at you, me, you big wolf. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you look like, the wolf. <laughs> Come in, here, my dears. <laughs> you know, Red, Red, Russell and Russell. Russell and Russell. What the fuck is going on? That Russell and Russell. Sometimes when I have chocolate and sweeties, woo, things happen. <laughs> All right, Russell and Russell. Um, you know, no, it's Little Red Riding Hood. Come in here for tea, No, my that's dear. Hansel and Gretel. Well, what does Red Riding Hood do in the fox? Or the, wolf? the fox eats, tries to eat Red Riding Hood. Yeah, but Hood. she does say, come in, come in for a cup of tea, my No, dear. that's Hansel and Gretel. Oh, God, moving on. No, it's not moving on. Do you, do you, there's loads of things. You know, you know the true story behind The Little Mermaid? Do you know this? No. Okay, The Little Mermaid was given the option to be on land, to be with the person that she... So mummies are real? No, to be on the land. I think I've told you this before. To be on land, the person she loved. And if she did, she then, when she walked on land, it would feel like she was walking on glass. Amazing. I can't explain what Sophie did the other day. One of Sophie's earrings that she had <laughs> in her ear, because uh, because uh, you you are you're, you're much better at cleaning up. And no, it was property of a photo shoot. Yeah, and it was in my bag, and it was th- that's why it slipped out my bag. It slipped out Sophie's, and it was like you know with the head up, the pointy bit that goes in your ear. <laughs> it was the pointy bit that was going in her ear, and it landed on the ground with the pin facing up. And I was walking around the house barefoot, and I stepped onto the earring and the whole thing went into my foot. I must say the that whole any, thing went into my any foot. Any women listening to this girls or men wearing earrings I've never had an earring that if you stood on it it would go into your foot. Like that is a seriously sharp earring. You just got lucky. That was karma. What do you mean it was karma? I don't know but there's got to be some reason or like Frodo Baggins put some shoes on. And, and then when you you just and also honey you just laughed at me when it happened. <laughs> You did like that. You it, just laughed at it me. It was honestly like a sketch. I couldn't believe it. He put his foot up and this glittery diamond top of the earring was just poking out and it was flat in and you peeled it out. You were so angry with me. I was so angry because you left it on the floor. Oh, for God I sake, I'd walked in. For God I sake. <laughs> for God I sake, I'd walked in for one minute. I'd, be, I'd literally like just be, barely put my bag down and I was getting screamed at already by OCD Baggins over there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, to be honest, you, to, <laughs> Come on. You, you have made up for it though, because you know, we spoke on the podcast how you wake up in the morning, you flick all the lights on the stuff yes. like that. <laughs> this morning, you woke up at like six o'clock, and I was like so tired. <laughs> what? Something it's like, what's going on? And I looked into the corner of the room. You had a torch. <laughs> My you were, phone torch? You were, going, you were like a burglar. You were going through all the drawers trying to <laughs> I couldn't find my keys or my headphones. You were going through. I was like, so I was like, what the fuck is that? (laughs) I I had your black black puffer jacket on. See, I'm so silent. You were so silent. You were so silent. But you were going through it like a little burglar. Yeah. Well, you asked me to be quiet. What can I do? Uh, I really enjoyed it. Also, I know this is a little unrelatable. What? But 
Sophie's birthday was... I know exactly what you're about to say and I'll just hold you there. Don't hold me anywhere, sister. I I don't mean to be ungrateful, but I, I actually am like saving the saving you some cash because I don't want to take something that's so expensive that I don't want. <laughs> I, I also think on your birthday, you'd woken up on the wrong side of the bed a little bit. Is that fair to say now? I had done an 11 hour shoot <laughs> and Sorry. then gone for dinner and then... You got into bed and started calling me a one-eyed watcher all night and wouldn't <laughs> shut up. And then I woke up and you were like, right, morning, let's put, give you a present. I was like, I haven't even had a coffee. And we all know I'm not a huge fan of birthdays. And I, I went downstairs and I got Sophie's present, which is a lovely bracelet. It's very, very generous. It's very generous. I just, they don't suit me. I've tried them on loads. I don't, I've ne I, I don't like them for me. <laughs> Can I actually say what actually happened? This is actually the best. So I'll put it out there. I bought Sophie a Cartier bracelet. No, okay. I sound like a spoiled brat. No, but it was so funny. I but bought, guys, I, 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 would, I said to him, take it back and I don't want anything. Because that's nice, right? I'm not saying go <clears> buy me something cows. I know. But honey, I bought Sophie a Cartier bracelet. And it was one of those uh, little nail things. It was quite small. Anyway, she opens up the Cartier box and I saw your face because I think, Sophie, for a long time, I've hinted at the fact that I might be buying Sophie a watch. No, and but guys, when seriously. When you went to open it, you thought it was going to be a watch and the disappointment Can in I your just... face when you opened it up. And I said, as you looked at it, I went, you thought it was going to be a watch. Well, and you the... went... Eh. Well, can I just like, <laughs> Can I just explain that for so long I have found a Cartier watch that I want. And I keep saying, I'm going to go buy myself this watch. And every day, Jamie goes, no, just wait, just wait. And gives me the side eye. He's like, just wait. Oh, Sophie, mm -mm -mm. just wait. When's your birthday? Just wait. Then it, to this is two Years ago, one birthday went, I was like, okay, fair enough, we're getting married. Second year, I'm like, well, what the fucking, what's the hold up? Let me out, go and get my own watch. It's so expensive. No, just wait. Well, what am I waiting for? Well, I don't know. You're waiting for something, but just wait, all right? Okay? No. Just wait, your sister. Okay, listen. Um, <laughs> it's a Halloween episode, so we got, there is so much to get through today because so much is going on. Uh, by the way, have you ever, have you ever been really scared, Soph? Yeah. Okay, tell me when. Um, I was really scared. I've told you about when I used to see a cow at the end of my bed and it was actually a woman in black and white, Victorian clothes. Yeah. That was really scary. My old house was incredibly haunted. Yeah. So that was scary every night. It was scary. And you believe in ghosts? Yes. Okay, all right. Well, I think what, I think what we should do today on the podcast, right, is because it's Halloween and you know how much I love scary movies and stuff like that. I think we should read scary stories to each other. Boy, I'm in. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Okay. Let's read some scary stories. Sick. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's read some scary stories to settle in. Newlyweds listeners, here's a scary story for you. <laughs> Shh, you'll figure it out. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Stop it. Just honestly, just behave. Here we go. Jamie and Sophie were deeply in love and often took romantic getaways to escape the hustle and bustle of everyday life. <laughs> One summer, they decided to visit a remote cabin nestled in the heart. Is that just sound effects you're doing? Yeah. Why is there wind? In the cabin. <sighs> cabin. Is that the air con or is it just... One summer, it's not winter. Okay. They decided to visit a remote cabin nestled in the heart of a dense, ancient forest. The cabin was surrounded by towering trees that branches forming a canopy that blocked out most of the sunlight. As the sun set on their first night at the cabin, Jamie and Sophie enjoyed a cosy dinner crackle, by the fireplace. Crackle, fire and bulb. The crackling fire cast eerie shadows on the walls, creating an intimate yet unsettling atmosphere. But they were too enamored with it. Enamored. <laughs> but they were too enamored with each other to let the ominous ambience bother them. After dinner, they decided to take a moonlight walk through the dark forest. 
Hand in hand, they ventured deeper into the woods, guided only by the pale glow of the moon and the rustling leaves. Jamie instinctively remembered the last time they were in the woods together. A happier time, one filled with romance and lust. Do you remember that time when we No, were... but can you speed up? You're honestly reading this like you're so Do you, do you remember smart. that time when we were in the woods on, in lockdown? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> like, unfortunately. Oh, please, get over it. <laughs> Sophie and I... <laughs> Sophie and I... You're this midway through story, killed the vibe. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going to do... Sophie... Oh, oh my god, spit it out. Okay, we were younger and we were a bit bit frisky and we had sex in the woods and Sophie was scared there was gonna be a paparazzi, so she put the jacket over her head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, days of the days. Why are we in the woods? It was locked down, that's why. <laughs> Oh my God, hurry up. And she was wearing little boots and she thought, don't worry, we're in the middle of the Cotswolds. Why the fuck would there be a paparazzi in the woods? And she said she's wearing little boots. So if someone, if I was photographed, they wouldn't know who it was. <laughs> no, it actually looked like you'd be doing something terrible. <laughs> okay, here we go. As they strolled, they noticed strange symbols etched onto the trees and particular, and peculiar rock formations that seemed out of place. And of course, Sophie would know about rocks being out of place. Let's not forget the small loan she withdrew to purchase 20,000 pounds worth of crystals to place around her downstairs bathroom. Have you noticed how quiet it is here? Jamie whispered. It's almost unnerving. Nod, nod. Sophie nodded, her unease growing. Maybe we should head back to the cabin. Just as they turned to retrace their steps, they heard an eerie distant sound. The whispers carried on the <sighs> through the wind. The whispers seemed to call their names. It's Lang. It's, it, I'm, honestly, that's your surname. It's Lang. Jamie Lang. Was Jamie's first thought. But even despite Jamie's second name being whispered incorrectly, they both felt a sudden fright. They quickened their pace, but the forest appeared to conspire against them. The path they had taken seemed to have vanished, and the trees now stood ominously close together, forming a claustrophobic labyrinth maze. Panic set in as they realised they were lost. As they continued to wander, the whispers grew louder and more insistent, and the forest took on a sinister life of its own. Trees reached out with sharp branches and the shadows danced in eerie patterns. The ghostly voices called to them, now more sinister than ever before. Jamie, Sophie! We know about your Botox, Jamie. Sophie, how many times a day do you really need to get a facial? We know about all the Botox, Jamie. You get filler in your face. You do. No, I don't. I, I don't. don't get filler. I've never had filler in my face. Stop ruining the atmosphere. <laughs> in the heart of the forest, they stumbled upon a clearing dominated by an ancient tree. The trunk was covered in strange symbols and a dark, deep hole appeared at its base. The whispers emanated from the hole and a cold, unsettling wind blew from its depths. Jamie panicked. It didn't feel like he'd just farted. It must have come from the trunk. Terrified, Jamie and Sophie were drawn to the hole as if it was an irresistible force. Just as they were about to descend into the darkness, they remembered their love for each other. They clung to each other and fought the eerie compulsion, but the forest had other plans. As it knew to tempt the lovers into the trunk, it had to play on their deepest insecurities. A final whisper echoed around the forest. I wish point Sophie's eyes lit up as she knew they couldn't have been referring to her. She took one last look at Jamie and gave him a loving kiss on the cheek. Jamie said in panic, But I'm only 35. The whispers quickly turned to laughter. <laughs> Even Sophie chuckled. She turned her back on him for the final time. 35? She thought. He must have been born when 1984. God, that's a long time ago. Oof. She shivered more than she'd ever shivered before. Without looking back, with a strong stride forward, she quietly but confidently said to herself, Wow. Maybe this is for the best. The end.
Jackie boy. Written by producer Jack. I mean, was that scary? I don't think anything scary happened in that. We, there was a lot of ancient woods going on. Well, yeah, I tried my best. I tried my best. And you did try your best. Yeah. I quite like What do you think, Soph? I thought that was scary. Sophie. I'm more scared about the fact that you said that I'd have filler. You I was joking. I was part of the story, honey. Didn't see them saying that. <laughs> okay. All I see is a liar. Okay, right. It's time for a favourite part of the episode, which you know what it is, sister. Listeners messages. Listeners messages. Oh, okay. So we got the lights back on, do we? Lights are back and cameras oh. in action. Weirdly, something about being in the dark really comforts me. Oh, yeah. But if you want it comforting, you breathe like this. Through your nose? No, you breathe in and then you breathe again. Okay. All right. Well, should we continue the podcast? Yeah. Sophie's little Fiat 500, the fanny, as we know. You can't even drive. Like, the fact you're even going to criticise me at the age of 40 and not being able to drive is just ridiculous. (laughs) Okay, it's not 40, but yeah, I get you. By the way, someone posted under our video of the Fiat called Fanny, uh, which we totally missed out on, which was, will you fill up my fanny? (laughs) (laughs) I think I said that. (laughs) Did you? I definitely said it. Or will you service my fanny? (laughs) My fanny needs a service. (laughs) 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 <laughs> my fanny needs a my, my, my fanny, fanny needs cleaning. Needs, my fanny needs a clean. It's just so my fanny is filthy. <laughs> Don't touch my filthy fanny. <laughs> no, sorry, it's gone. We can't continue. That anyway, naughty, naughty how... little fanny. <laughs> Always getting up to mischief. Well, you are blasé about your fanny. If I'm totally honest, because honestly, <laughs> today. Sophie drove into where we record the podcast and there are, I reckon, 15 window cleaners just cleaning all the windows of this sort of co-working <laughs> thing. So many of them everywhere. Sophie has driven in her <laughs> Fiat 500 into the car park, which, by the way, every single time she parks here, she gets another ticket because she doesn't pay for the parking. No, I do not, you absolute criminal liar. <laughs> you... That is the biggest load of bullshit. You, how... I've got one in my life honey, because I pay, you honey, bastard. No, honey, they get the, the CCTV of you leaving doesn't get sent to you. Who's it getting sent to? It gets to? sent to our agent, to our manager. Yes. But I thought this was free parking. No, you have to pay for it. You've never told me that. You told me to park it. You said it was for free. You think it's free London parking? Well, I think that we rent a room here so we should get a parking spot. Is that not correct? No, it's not correct. Anyway. Well, that's a load of rubbish. Anyway, Sophie's, um, so, oh, sorry, Sophie's so blase about it. There's about 16 window cleaners all cleaning the windows, having a lovely time. Sophie, uh, there's a knock on our door just now. Some lovely lady who works in the workspace comes up and says, sorry, do you guys own the Fiat 500? We said, yes, Fanny, that's us. Says, well, you've parked it in the wrong place. Sophie hands me the key. I go outside to see where it's parked. You needed to back up Fanny. And I, Sophie has parked the Fanny in totally the wrong spot. It is. So you're not even. You're not even in a parking space. Yeah, I'm aware of that because the others are disabled. I'm not going to take up a disabled parking okay. space. So I parked on in the air, yeah. in the free in the free space because I can't. T- I'm not. T- it's just space. She's parked in the space. Yeah, but I'm not blocking anyone in, and I'm not parking in disabled parking. She's parked in just the random space, and to make matters worse, <laughs> she's parked on the hose of the water for the window cleaners. So all the window cleaners don't have any. So they're up like they're on a up. on a ladder and they're like one guy right? one guy one guy's no, no. on the um what's it called being hoisted in the yeah. air. Tram- and trapeze. He, he's not on a trampoline. <laughs> trapeze. He's not, so we you it. think he's on a trampoline I, and he bounces like, up and does let's it. Let's just actually go to what's more important but about there's this. There's no water coming think up. Think about what we have in life. We have people who climb up in the freezing cold and hang in the air and clean our windows for yeah. us. Well, they were until you parked the Fiat on the hose and stopped all the water going to their hose pipe. It's not my fault, Fanny Zorty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, come tear it up, honey. This is spooky. Right, Here we go. This is anonymous. For a Halloween. Wait, I'm scared. Ah! Oh. Oh. Okay. For a Halloween party, my boyfriend had a costume that required the majority of his visible skin to be covered in charcoal. Bearing in mind, my costume was pretty see through too. We decided to get hot and steamy in a dark room at the party. Came out the. <laughs> 
came out of the room, back to the party, only to realise I had charcoal handprints around my neck, <laughs> bum and face. Frisky. Not only was it painfully obvious to everyone who what had happened, but it Bumped ruined my, my costume for the night and everyone that saw me asked if I'd had sex. I think it would have looked like part of the costume. Oh my God, that's pretty... Like a perfect handprint. That, well, the reason why I was laughing as well is that it totally reminded me of a friend of mine. Uh, when we were 16 years old, we went to a Halloween party and he dressed up in um, black bin liners. So he was like, I don't know, like a, a, a he wore black. Not scary, but yes. Yeah, but he wore like black bin liners. I can't, I think he was like, like, I don't know, some sort of scary thing, but it was all black bin liners. He didn't wear anything underneath his black bin liners. And I don't know if you've ever worn a bin liner. It basically like holds in the heat. So <laughs> we went to this party and I saw him on the dance floor, like dancing loads. And he came off and he was like, I can't, I can't <laughs> breathe. <laughs> I can't breathe. And he couldn't take off the bin liners because he had no clothes on it. So he had to sit in his sweat oh. the entire time. Well, that was a funny party. That was a funny old party. Okay, Trisha has a spooky story. You ready? <clears throat> this story is perfect for you guys because it's scary and it's poo related. When I was 17, we all went on holiday to Spain. It was all... Uh, it was an all-inclusive hotel, which meant we all got drunk, including myself. Anyway, one evening, I got so drunk, I needed a big poo. And we were all outside in the drinking section. So I snuck off and decided it would be a good idea to do a big poo in the pool. Oh, what the This was a shared pool for all the residents. Why would you do that? But at the same time, I was desperate. After doing the poo, I returned and forgot all about it. That evening, we went to bed and I forgot about the whole fiasco. The next morning, however, after vaguely remembering what happened, I felt appalled with myself. I thought, surely someone will just clean it up. But, but to my absolute shock, after opening my front door, I noticed a bag in front of me on the floor. It stank. I opened the bag to be faced with that gigantic poo once more. On the side of the poo, there was a handwritten note saying, not in the pool. It was terrifying. I of disposed of the bag immediately, but for the rest of the holiday, I had no idea who'd fished my poo out of the pool, tracked me down, and delivered my poo. It must have been a staff member, CCTV, a person or a family member, but I was so embarrassed I didn't tell a soul. It became a very paranoid holiday from that point on. Any idea who you think it could have been? I would imagine it would have been CCTV. You sick motherfucker. You think they, the security, went and got the I poo. think, why are you pooing in a pool? Surely there was a pavement next to it. Or even the floor. Like, why would you get into water where the poo particles are going to float about with you? Oh. I don't even know how you would poo underwater. That is awful. Okay. Years ago, when I was dating a boy at 17, we would often get frisky in risky places. Mm -hmm. Ooh, naughty. You guys know the jail. Well, one night, staying around my grandparents' house, we decided to start having sex in the living room, which is where we were staying that evening. It was about 8 to 9-ish p.m., and Grandma and Granddad had both gone to bed at this point. It was going well, and we were keeping the volume at a controlled level, when suddenly the house phone started ringing. It scared the life out of both of us. I didn't know what to do, so I left it. I rang, it rang out, and we decided it wouldn't damp, dampen the mood, so carried on. However, just five minutes later, the phone rang again. Ring, 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 ring. It wasn't the loudest phone, but it had a very creepy tone to it. For some reason, I decided it would be a good idea to pick it up. And when I did, all I could hear was the terrifying noise of heavy breathing. Oh, my God. What the fuck? It, it felt Sorry, like... Sorry, is that some, you shivering? Yeah, it felt like someone was watching us. I said, hello, but nothing. So I hung up. At this point, we realized the bloody curtains were open. Everything the was... The curtains? At this point, we realized the bloody curtains were open. Everything was rushing through my mind. Shit, I thought. Maybe sweet Dorothy from across the road had seen me in a doggy position. This was certainly a mood killer, as now we were both terrified. Moments later, the phone rang again. I had to pick it up. My boyfriend fully under the, the sheets at this point, and again, more breathing. It was deathly loud and ominous, ominous as fuck. I immediately hung up, and that evening we go, got next to no sleep. 
Of course, I never brought this up to my grandparents and was so embarrassed by the whole sex situation. For years, I thought they lived next to a psycho killer. I honestly have goosebumps. When one evening at Christmas, my grandma made a joke about how granddad used to keep sleeping with his phone and would often accidentally pocket call their own house. So it was my granddad the whole time, which actually creeped me out more. No, that's really... I quite like that. That's so scary. My papa used to do that and call me and I'd be like, hello, and it just be everything. I'd be like... Okay, everybody, thank you so much uh, for sending in your scary stories. Please keep sending in all of your stories. We absolutely love, love them. them. We love them. Send them to newlyweds at newlyweds on Instagram. Or you can send us a lovely email, newlyweds at jampopproductions.co.uk. We want to hear from you. Please send them in. Okay, everybody, that's the end of Sophie. Listeners messages. Okay, guys, so um, it's obviously the Halloween episode, as you know, and I've made a bit of a mistake, haven't I, Producer Jack? You've cocked it up. I've cocked it up. Now, um, we I've made a boo-boo. I'm going to say it. I've made a boo-boo. There we go. <laughs> um, obviously, uh, Sophie would normally be here in the episode, but I have cocked it up. I'd, Producer Jack and I had organized for a medium, a psychic medium, to come on the show and contact the dead. dead. The dead. Something that Sophie would absolutely love She would to absolutely do. love it more than anything. And I completely cocked it up, and I didn't tell Sophie the time... <laughs> Or it was happening, or anything at all. So, ladies and gentlemen, you just have me and producer Jack on the episode for the rest of it. Well, not for the rest of it, just for this pit bit with the medium who is called Natalie, and she's going to give me a psychic reading, and potentially we're going to get in contact with the dead. Natalie, um, I'm going to put out that I'm a little bit nervous. Okay. Um, I don't know why, um, because... Um, I'm never really that nervous about anything. But when it comes to something that I don't really know or maybe yeah. understand, but I believe, that's a bit, I find a bit nerve-wracking. The unknown makes us vulnerable, <gasps> but you are fine. Are you sure? <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> oh, God. Now, so you're a psychic medium. What does that mean? If, I was, if we had to go depth, what does that actually mean? That is when I become aware, become sensitive of the dead. Are you Those serious? people that have gone before us. Oh my God. Our loved ones, our relatives. Um, as I, I talk to you, it's sometimes when people come to me for a reading or when I demonstrate mediumship, you're just aware of souls from the unseen world. When did you realize you you had these abilities? I realized I had the ability to become aware of the spirit world at quite a young age. I was in primary school. Um and I can visualise the building now, how it was, how it looked then. So I know by my teacher looking back when I've read my old school reports, I was around the age of five to six years old. One of the classrooms was a library. And I remember going into that library, if you was good, you finished your work, end of the day, you're 10 minutes to read a book. And I thought it was a public library um, and you would never let the public into a school library with children. Um, and, but I always just assumed, never questioned it, never said to anyone, what are these people? Because everyone was just sat there normal reading. But there was people of all different ages. And it was only when I was older that I realised I was seeing the spirit world. I was seeing people of all different ages just sat opposite a desk with me. What? And then... Um, I loved my headmaster, William Morgan, Mr. Morgan. And I would have been around 10 years old my last year of school. Mm. And I, I could still like hear the singing. We was doing a school concert. And he turned and walked out the double doors to go home. And I knew he was going home. And I just had this sinking feeling and knew I'm never going to see you again. I didn't know why, but I remember feeling really sad then... And all the teachers were crying and just really like off in the morning. And it come to morning break and my teacher announced that he had died. He'd had a huge heart attack and very quickly passed away. And we was going to, I think we had like, um, not a, she didn't say a minute silence. We said a little prayer as a class, yeah. as you do. And I was just beside myself. I was really crying bad, couldn't get up, couldn't go out to play. 
all the other children had like moved on within a minute. It was their playtime. They're all out. And I still remember now crying into my Ribena. Oh. And I don't know why, but I think it was dawning on me that I was aware of something. When we die, I feel we lose the physical body that has been the vessel that we've lived in within whatever lifetime. Yeah. So we almost shed that skin and bone that has been our body and our soul continues. Have you ever helped solve a case? Have you ever, has there ever been any occasion where yeah. you've Yeah, said- yes. There, I can't name it, but a case was reopened. I read for a family of a woman that was missing. The DCI has contacted me a couple of times confidentially and just said to me, um, could you look at a photo, like other cases, could you look at a photo, could you look at something else? I said where they needed to look. Unbeknown to me, it was a place where um, the boyfriend knew about. I didn't know that, but he was familiar with that area and familiar with that place. What? Yeah. Yeah. And you could and just they, sense then, it. You they just knew. Opened, they reopened the case and they... Um, was it a murder case? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was It was a missing person stroke thought to be murder, but obviously they, they had, there was no body, but there, there was remains found. Wow. Yeah, there was. And I imagine today we're going to do some sort of reading. Some sort I'll try. Of, you'll try. Very hard. Very hard. <laughs> We're going to give it a go. Is that right, Producer Jack? Yeah, let's get into it. I'm okay. excited. So, Natalie, do I need to do anything? Do, do, do I need to give you anything? No, you don't. No, I can tune into your energy. Um, I can just tune into your spirit world and just um, become aware. I won't ever divulge personal information, but you might get a little bit of life guidance thrown in just while I work with your energy and then ask the spirit world to come forward. But I'm not going to sit here and obviously you can go, you need to delete that bit if I start talking. You can say I'm not going to like see your bank balance or suddenly go, oh my oh, God. If you could, I'm, yeah. hand, actually. <laughs> I'm in your kitchen right now. Um, but we'll see how we go. I, I know that there is a gentleman here. I do feel he's ill before he passes, but there is something unexpected. And again, I do oh. realise we don't get told the time and the day of when we go, but family thought that he still had options. People were still talking as if we'll see what medicine's going to do or we've got the doctor next week. People were very much still talking as if there's options there. I do feel he has gone before his wife. I'm not <laughs> saying he's a right age to pass, but I feel he talks about going into older age. Now, I feel I've got your granddad here. <laughs> yeah. Um, would your granddad have smoked at one time, but not towards the end of life? Yeah, he smoked like, um, I think he smoked like mini like cigarette, cigar things. Because I feel as if I've definitely cut down or even cut right back, not because he's ill, but like later on in life. I don't feel, yeah. it's like almost a social thing for him. So I feel, he's not a recluse, but I just feel I'm not so, the social art I once was, so I'm going to kind of not smoke as much. Yeah, he, That's he, how I feel. Yeah, he stopped doing it and he, he moved away and he stopped yeah. drinking and everything. Yeah. Because I just feel I've cut right back. He's not got a He's not got bad habits, but I've cut right back. A massive sense of pride for you. Would you understand it's more leaning towards, like, I want to say hello to your dad? Like, dad's side. Yeah, it's my dad's side. Because he just says, um, not ignoring your mum at all, but it's like, I want to say hello to dad. I want to be remembered to dad. So that's, sometimes that's how they let me know symbolically. It's like dad's side of the family. Yeah. Um, With the greatest respect, this is where I get myself into trouble now, with the greatest respect, he thinks you're crazy but loves you to bits. Like, don't lose your craziness. Not crazy in a bad way, but like crazy as in um, your grandfather, do you mind me saying he's like eccentric in some habits? Yeah. You have a similarity, but almost like a grounded eccentric. So you're not away with the fairies like dangerous. Yeah. Um, you're eccentric sometimes. You, you won't follow. If you don't want to follow, you'll lead. Yes. You will not say yes because a majority has said yes, even if you stand on your own, because he loves you um, 
but there's three. There's three. I don't feel he's. I feel he's got more than three grandchildren. But is, are you one of three? three? Yeah, I'm one of three. Because he just says, "I I love three of you dearly." And this is a man that if he loves one of you, he loves the other two the same. He's very fair. He's not yeah, making he's a great. beeline like Christmas presents to gift anything to yeah. you. Um, he's very fair. He was amazing at presents. Yeah, there's something where, but it's almost like whatever the budget is. All of you get this, not the same present, but he treats you all equally. Yeah. we yeah. In my family, there is equality. Yeah, granted, we used to give us the best presents, all equal. Everyone was always excited yeah. to get his present. Um, because I just feel that as he's here now, um, there's something where he says, but you asked for me and you wanted me to say hello. Yeah. That is wild. You said that yesterday. I said that yesterday. You said what? What did you say? What did you say? I'm yesterday? not even kidding you. I'm not even kidding. I spoke to your mom and I said I would love to meet my granddad. I see my or my grand had come. He was an amazing guy. He was pretty eccentric yeah. in lots of ways. Because he just said, "You asked for me. You wanted me to come and say hello." On my dad's side, Grand Turk. Yeah. Oh, I'm so pleased for you because this is why I do what I do. It's that not about me. It's not about wild. me. It's about the well, ah! <laughs> I was thinking that this whole time. I was like, I don't know this person, but I'm every. We had a conversation about it. Yeah. Yeah. Because he just says, you asked for me and you wanted me Whoa. to come and say hello. And it's it's like as simple as that. I've come into the room when he would have been here. When you walk into the room, it's not followed you all morning, but he simply would have been like not far behind you because he would have known I'm going to get the opportunity to like say hello. And he wants me to. This is going to work. He, he's just a lovely, lovely mm. man. And mm. I know that's a general word. Thank you so much. Thank you. I pleasure. really appreciate it. My God. Absolute pleasure. Jackie, what a lovely surprise. Not very Halloween-esque, actually. Quite, just, quite the opposite. Yeah, really but that's lovely. great. That's what we want. Yeah. yeah. That's what we In want. In some ways, spirit world, is it spooky? It can be spooky. But there is such simplicity and normality to the spirit world. I love that. And we're all going to go there at some point. Uh, not me. I'm going to survive forever. So, yeah. <laughs> Immortal Jamie. Yeah. Natalie, thank you so much. That was such You're a treat. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. That was wonderful in every way. You are very welcome. That was unbelievable. Producer Jack? Crazy. Oh, my God. Uh, Sophie, I can't believe she missed that. Um, maybe we talk about it on the next episode with her because that was absolutely wild. Okay, I think now we should probably go back to the end of the episode with my lovely wife on it. What do you think? I think that makes sense. Okay, happy Halloween, everybody. Here's back in the episode. It's like Inception. We're going back to the episode, in the episode, which is already, in, you know what I mean. Here's, here's back to Sophie and I. Okay. Have you ever told you the story when the most scared I've ever been? Mm -mm. Oh my God. I, when I was at Leeds University. I was so scared. I was at Leeds University and my housemate would for some bizarre reason sometimes leave our front door open Ooh, in the middle of I'm Leeds. Really creeped out. I came back from uh, after lectures or whatever, came to our house and the door was open. And I was like, oh my God, it was the middle of like the winter. And I was like, oh my God. So I didn't know what to do. Shout in the house, hello, hello. No one in there. My friend was walking past and I said, can you come in the house with me and check no one's in here? What friend? It's called Dacre, yeah. Anyway, Dacre went in and checked it and he was like, there's nothing in here. And I was like, okay, fine. Went in there, shut the door, locked You wouldn't it. even go. You made your mate go in. Yeah, I was scared. I was scared. Okay. married to a wet wife. I went in there, locked the door, didn't think anything about it, went to bed that night. And in my room, I would sleep with the door slightly ajar and I would have the light on in the corridor and the light would shine in through the door. That night I heard a noise and I was like, what the hell? And I was like, someone's in the house. And I've never been so scared in my entire life. And I went, hello? And the noise stopped. And I was like, oh my God. And then I heard more noise coming up the stairs. I heard this like thing coming up the stairs. And I was like, what the hell is it? And I was like, breathing. So I got out of bed and I slowly started walking towards the door. And the shadow was coming across the door. And as I got nearer and nearer, nearer another shadow was coming across, across the door like that. And I was like, oh my God. And as I got close, I realized it was my own shadow. <laughs> That's a fucking joke. Isn't it? I You're swear to God, someone have been doing too many narcotics at university. <laughs> I mean, you joke. You haven't done any narcotics. Someone was having far too much fun at uni. <laughs> you know, I I was so scared. We also, I don't care. 
<laughs> we used to live in this house. Yeah. And we never would lock the back door. Like, honestly, not once. The back door was open and the back door to get into the actual house, like, to get into the garden. And then you'd mm-hmm. walk through the house. And you would always hear... But obviously, we had, like, a gardener who was always there. So I never knew whether it was him or not. Anyway, I... My sister was out walking with Dobermans. And my sister was out walking the Dobermans with her friend. And it was just me in my house. My house was haunted as hell. Like, so yeah. haunted, you don't know. Okay. So scary. And suddenly I hear... And I just bombed. There was only one room in my entire house that had a lock on it. And it was a flimsy little lock. I mean, anyone could have broken through. One room. So I'd always run to the upstairs bathroom and lock the door. I mean, literally, you could have pushed it and the lock would have broken. It was so old. I had the door and I had my... What I thought, dun, 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 let me in. Oh, she's like, over there, mate. She's up there. Two pe- two guys. And I was like, shit, you not. I'm like 10. I don't know where my mom and dad were. Anyway, I'm like <gasps> hyperventilating. I'm like, please. I don't know what happened to me. I look out the window to the front of the house and <laughs> I see my, my gardener with earmuffs on, on the sit on lawnmower, mowing the front lawn. And I'm like this. And they I hear them coming up. They're coming up the first stairs. Then they're coming up the second stairs. Oi, mate! She's over here. I hear her in here. Bang, bang, bang. What do I do? Run. And I smash my bare little 10-year-old hand through the window. Because I thought in my mind, I need to get the gardener's attention. But he couldn't hear me because he had the earmuffs on and was lowering them all. I smashed my hand. And my sister goes, Sophie, it's me. It was her and her friend. <laughs> And I still you smashed your hat. I can imagine that. Oh. <laughs> the worst thing was my dad was so angry because our house was like limit, not limited edition. It's a limited edition house. And why is it where you like you can't smash the windows? You can't get them double pane. So it was like what? like it's an old house. Honey, I think your dad just said that to get you irritated. Oh, he was cross at yeah, me because he had to pay for a new window. <laughs> he had to pay for a new window. Fucking gardener was still like this. <laughs> And even then, when my sister was like, it's you me. Punched. Yeah, That's but, mental. Guys, you seriously. You through a the window. The force, the force, like, it was kind of weird because I didn't have one cut on me or a grace. That's really dangerous. Because I'd done it with such force. There was no, it wasn't slow. It was like, boo. And anyway, my even when my sister was like, it's me, I actually think this might have been trauma. I still wouldn't open the door for like an hour. I had to get my parents. I had to come home because I still wouldn't believe it. I was like, no, it, there's definitely... I that's ter- That's the scariest part of the story. Because I, I, it was so believable, the voice. I was like, no, I know there's a man with you. I thought they'd captured her and her friend and they were trying to lure me out. I was like, no. <laughs> that did, is terrifying. She did this to me always. Like, I honestly have trauma. That there. is terrifying. Yeah. It's so scary. Oh my No wonder God. I don't know I'm watching scary movies. So many things happen to you. I've told you this time when someone threw something at me. I must have said this. No. When I was at Leeds University, again, I was always at Leeds, and I was going down the side of the road, and, and it was... Oh, God, I hate it. It was Halloween. It was Halloween. And, and a car... Woo, it goes so past. And it's, this car was driving past, and they shouted, Apple! And I looked, Ooh, and they threw scary. an apple at my... That's not fucking scary. Threw an apple, and it hit me square in the head. No, what about when my mum was in this house and my granddad kept having this reoccurring dream of like this locket. And so my unc- my granddad's brother lived in this house and then my granddad yeah. lived in it after him. Uh-huh. Anyway, he went off to warm the uncle, the brother. And my gra- 10 years later, they've been living in this house. Loads of weird shit was happening. Mate, you should get my mum on there to tell the story. But my granddad one day got drunk at a dinner party. And he said, I keep, I've had this reoccurring dream for 10 years. We dig in the or- orchard, orchard. 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 <laughs> An orchard. Orchid. <laughs> An orchid. In the orchard, you d- we d- it was him digging under this tree and they found a locket of a girl. <gasps> he tells the story. He said it's an o- rare car in his garden. They had an orchard. He said this rare car dream. He, it was so realistic. And he says it with my his brother there, my mum's uncle. And my mum's uncle said, I had that dream every single night I lived in that house. The minute I left it, I stopped having that dream. Anyway, every single one of the children, my as in my mum and her siblings, would fall down the stairs to the point where my grandma was like, "You, ha- no one can go up those stairs. You all fall down it. Like, stop running in the house. They'd be in so much trouble. They weren't allowed to go up the stairs. And anyway, loads of shit happened. And in the end, they ended up knocking the house down because so much shit had happened. But when they did and they decided to leave, they looked into it. And one, there were two sisters who lived in the house 
way back when. And one of the sisters killed the other sister by pushing her down the stairs. Whoa. True story. And was that the locket they found? Who knows? <laughs> so you're not writing a book, but that was like... <laughs> and... One day, this is also just to add to it. Okay. One day, my granddad's just sat. He, the kids kept saying like they hated it, but you know, like back then, like your parents just did not listen to anything yeah. that sort of shit. They were like, he was like, no, no, no. One day, he was sat. This is when he decided to pull the house down. He was like, this is freaky as hell. They were sat in. He was sat in like the front room, and he said a sheet got came over the whole house. Like they couldn't hear the traffic, couldn't hear the wind, couldn't hear the trees, the birds, nothing. And suddenly, a door again, a bit like that, with a huge in like. Open. He was like, but there's no door. And then they looked at the old, the way the house used to be, and there was a door in that room that used to be like, and it basically, and then the sheet came off, and he was like, oh, fuck. Oh my God, just one more thing. I got one as well. No, one more thing. Okay, one more you thing. go right. first. Okay. Right. So the attic. Yeah, in your house. Of this house where my mum lived, my grandma was like rearranging it, and she would go out there and like clean it up or whatever. But it would just be boxes. And then she'd go back to bed, you know, sleep. And she could hear... And then in the night, she could hear dragging of, like, furniture. Like, stomp, stomp, stomp. Dragging of furniture, throwing books. And she was like, what the fuck is up there? Thinking the kids were out there. But in her head, she was like, we don't have chairs up there. It's just boxes and, like, storage stuff. And obviously, some ghost up there was, like, moving the furniture back. Just did not want it to be touched. Freaky shit. Wait, is that the story? That's the story. She didn't go up and check. She went up and checked. There was nothing had been moved. Nothing had been touched. But she could hear noises. She could hear like, they could all hear noises. There was a guy at my school who told me the scariest story ever. I think he was at my, yeah, he was at my school. A guy at my school told me the story um, ever that him and his brother were sitting watching TV and they could, they could have a sense of like someone was like watching them. Oh. And they were like, what the hell? Someone was watching them. He was like, this is when their parents were out for dinner. Like someone, it just, I, I, we feel like someone's in the house. Anyway, just didn't really think about it, didn't really think about it, didn't really think about it. And he was like, there's someone in the house. And he got up from the sofa and looked behind the sofa and there was a man then just smiled at him and ran out. <laughs> ah, no, I don't know that at all. Was he real? Yeah. No, 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 I hate that. I actually feel like I'm going to cry. That's the scariest thing I've ever Terrifying, yeah. Why the fuck? I have tears. How scary Why is that? Why you tell me Smiled that? at him. No, no, no. I can't hear that, guys. That's actually put the... Just like this? <laughs> Stop, you fucking creep. What do you... <laughs> I'm pitching one of this. Terrifying. All right, I'm scared enough now. Okay. Well, I actually have short of breath. Yeah, I'm... It was, yeah. What the hell? So... No, no, no. Yeah, not... true story. I'll tell you what is scary. Oh, here we go. Okay, fine, all right. It's, this is... Oh, this is kind of scary, actually. So my sister at uni, they, they didn't lock their back door. And I think it was my sister. It might have been her friend, but anyway. <laughs> let's just say it's my sister. My sister didn't lock the back door. And <laughs> you're fucking right. Okay. A lot of F-bombs today, sister. I know. I've got a sewage mouth. Is that what you call it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go. Um, so your sister she didn't, didn't lock... lock the back door. And they came down one day and like the, someone had made a bed with the sofa. Where, wait, hang, where are we? We're in Newcastle at university. Okay, so university. Here we go. Someone had made a bed with the sofa and like got all the pillows out and whatever. And she was like, well, that's weird. One of my friends, like one of the housemates from uni is sleeping, on, like obviously got drunk, like, you know, uni. And slept that downstairs. sort of shit happens. Sleeping on the floor in the, in the living room. Happens again and again and again. A week later, knock, 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 policeman comes in. They're like, hello. He's like, has, have, has a boy been staying here? Like, have you seen this guy? Describes this young boy. They're like, no. He said, well, he's been seen sneaking out of your house every morning. And a poor homeless boy. Well, no one knows what who he was, but my sister thinks he was homeless, so we feel sorry for he'd him. He'd been staying in the he'd house been at night. sleeping in there, just cozying up. And then re sneaking out in the morning. But they didn't mind because he was quite young and sweet. Did they meet him? No, they never saw him. That's, that's terrifying. I know, I think it's terrifying. But then if you think about it, like they were giving some poor guy a, a warm bed. Newcastle was cold. Honey, can you just, can we tonight, can we just go and watch loads of scary movies together? No. No, please, just get Don't some popcorn. Don't like it. Get some popcorn, go and sit on the sofa. Movies. Just maybe snuggle up, you know, maybe no. get a little bit frisky with We're each other. We're not getting frisky to a scary movie. I honestly You can dress up. Oh my, let's dress up. No. Let's dress up. Uh, there'll be, look, let's make it, we can make it a little bit frisky. You dress up as If like, you say frisky one more time, we'll never get frisky, yeah. Okay, let's get a little bit horny. <gasps> okay. <laughs> 
That was weird. <laughs> actually vile. How can that be vile? Vile. I'm, I hate I'm your husband. That. Who says the word horny? Only creeps say that what word. What do you want me to say? I want to have sex. Oh, you keep saying this. I just don't. Horny is not that. Producer horny Jack, what do you so say? Creepy, what do you say? I, you do not. I, go... no, I can't remember. Have ever you ever said horny. I'm horny? <laughs> no, it's a bit like a teenage boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's really weird to say the word horny. Honestly, Pete, I speak to people about it. All right, fine. It. I want you to dress up as a witch and let's have sex. All right, I'll put a long cook nose on. You didn't like that. <laughs> Sorry, you think it's normal. Let's uh, let's. I'll cast a spell over you. <laughs> I'll get some warts all over me <laughs> and some green hair. Oh, well, anything to improve it. It's not at all. I love you very much. I don't know why. I don't know what's happened. I can't actually bear that you say the word horny. The more I speak to people like the more I'm reinforced. It's not right. It's not right. It's not normal. What do I say when I... You say horny a lot. No, I don't. Actually, it's actually like it makes my face turn. Okay, all it right. It pisses let's, me off. Let's go home. Let's, let's eat some... <laughs> Lovely popcorn. Don't say that word again. Okay, let's just go home and watch movies on the other side of the sofa and not talk to each other. Fine. Great. I'm so glad you're up for that. What a way to end the episode. I love you. Love you. Happy Halloween, everybody. Happy hey. Halloween. <laughs> Happy trick or treating. <laughs> Happy trick or treating, not trickle treating. No, trick or treating. Happy trick or treating. Um, thank you so much for listening to our wonderful podcast. Honestly, it means so treating. much to us. It really does. It means so much, and so many of you have already subscribed to it. So thank you so much for doing that. If you haven't already, wherever you're listening to this, please click the subscribe button. And we're also on YouTube as well, where you can also subscribe to our lovely videos. People are loving the videos. Apparently, you can see what we dressed up for for Halloween, if you're interested. Um, also, send us any listeners' messages at Newlyweds Podcast or newlyweds at jampopproductions.co.uk if you want to send us an email. Okay, everybody, as we always end... If you're in a graveyard getting married... What the hell are you doing that for? <laughs> Do me, give me another one, go. If you're having sex... With onions. Oh, what the fuck? If you're having sex, sex with onions. <laughs> Come on, give me, give me another scary one. No, I'm just give me another. To do with like devils or something. Yes, vampire. vampires. Give me another scary one. I Go. Come on, give me a scary one. Here we go, honey. If, if you're, you're clawing into someone's backyard. <laughs> Is that what? Okay, yeah. wait. Here we go. If you're yes. getting divorced with a witch. Oh, ooh. With a good, witch. I good. Mean, no, but if you're getting divorced from a troll. No. <laughs> and if you are. You give me some. In the, oh, if you're got the thirst for being single. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We see you next Monday for another episode of Newlyweds. We love you. Share it. Let everyone know that keep listening to our wonderful podcast um, that we love to do. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Farewell, fair, fair, my, my maidens. Bye, my fair maiden. <laughs> bye, bye, my lieges. Goodbye, dear sweet angels. Sleep with the angels, my sweet pretties. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye.